Hi, this is Jill from HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to be doing a paired samples t-test. A paired samples t-test is appropriate when you're testing the difference between two means that are based on data that are either correlated with each other, usually positively, or they're simply matched uh, together on some basis. Uh, typically, um, the paired samples t-test is done on time one, time two data. You administer a treatment uh, after measuring uh, something like anxiety, depression, uh, foot fungus, it could be anything. Uh, you measure that at type one and then you apply a treatment and then at time two you measure the uh, dependent variable again and you want to determine whether there's a statistically significant increase or decrease in the mean value from time one to time two. In other cases the data are simply matched together there's no time one, time two uh, design. It's um, simply matched. Sometimes you have things like uh, identical twins uh, or family members. Uh, and in this case that I'm going to be demonstrating today, it's actually uh, investment performance data across time. So the matching variable is year uh, in which the performance was uh, demonstrated. Uh, and the dependent variables, or the two variables, are, in this case, Warren Buffett's uh, investment performance, which is um, used, which is um, published in a v that is investment vehicle called Berkshire Hathaway. And I realize there's a lot of other people that work at Berkshire Hathaway other than Warren Buffett. Um, but I've got. I'm just going to say Warren Buffett in this case because back in the '60s, I'm pretty sure it actually was only Warren Buffett that was doing the investment. Uh, and the variable, the mean performance of Warren Buffett uh, or Berkshire Hathaway is going to be compared against the S&P 500 accumulation index. And the hypothesis here that's being tested is, does Warren Buffett's performance uh, exceed that of the S&P 500 accumulation index in a statistically significant way? And one approach to testing that hypothesis is to use a paired samples t-test because we've got Warren Buffett's performance here in the year 1965, which was 23.8% uh, return, and the S&P uh, yielded 10%. And I've got data from 1965 all the way down to 2010. So a sample size of 46 matched pairs. To do the analysis is very easily easy. Go into Analyze, Compare Means, Paired Samples T-Test. You put Buffett and S&P. You can highlight those or do it individually to go into your variable boxes here, the paired variables, Buffett and S&P, variable 1 and variable 2. There are virtually no options to choose. Uh, I just keep it on a default. I think 95% is, is in fact the default, and that's pretty much the only thing you can choose in that options box. So I'm just going to click OK. And here's the output that SPSS produces for the paired samples t-test, very similar to the independent samples t-test. In the first table, we've got uh, the means. So Warren Buffett's average performance from 1965 to 2010 is 21.56% rounded. On average, 21.56% return. The S&P, by contrast, is a 10.96% return. So there's about a 10%, uh, about 10 uh, percentage points uh, there that are higher in favor of Warren Buffett's investment performance. And the standard deviations are also presented here. And we can see that uh, Warren Buffett's investment performance is actually yielding even less variability than that of the S&P. So he's not only outperforming the S&P, he's doing so in a more consistent way with less variability in the data. And investment analysts uh, would suggest that it's a less risky asset, uh, that Berkshire Hathaway is a less risky asset because it has less variance or variability in its uh, performance than the S&P. And that's amazing considering that Warren Buffett's performance is actually uh, nearly double that of the S&P. So that's why he's considered a phenom. Uh, and something here I'm going to mention is uh, in the independent samples t-test, uh, people always assume 
uh, various things like that the data were randomly sampled, that the variables have normal distribution, and that the variances are homogeneous. It's the homogeneity of variance assumption. People rarely talk about that in the paired samples t-test for some reason, and I'm not sure why, but because the formula for the paired sample t-test and the independent samples t-test is virtually identical with the exception of the introduction of a covariance term in the denominator in order to reduce the standard error. Uh, so why it is that SPSS does not give us a homogeneity of variance test is very disappointing, uh, considering that it's not very difficult to test, and uh, but it's very it's not very well known. In fact, a lot of stats packages do not provide a uh, test of the variance between two me uh, between two means for the paired sample t test. So what I've done is actually created a spreadsheet on my blog that calculates the Pittman Morgan test for you. It's quite easy to use. Uh, it's on my howtostatsblogspot.com. If you just type www.howtostats.com, you'll get to the blog that I uh, in, that I put blog posts on and that I put uh, put the, uh, in.